So the baton file, that AI follows the, uh, the river for the last 80 kilometers. And uh, feeling Dante dips his wings up and down and uh, for this last 50 miles. He brings the uh, Fulker down visually on the short takeoff and landing airstrip dirt runway in Chitral town. And when the Chitral, they see this rare speck of an airplane against that mm, pristine blue sky. They shudder up the uh, bazaar. Just, just padlocked the whole thing, and they all race out to the airport in their cargo jeeps. Yeah. Um, and uh, when the wheels of the aircraft touch the earth, Kipling becomes in harmony with his destiny. Soon to be reborn in a Victorian time war. He steps down onto the runway. Yeah, Chitral Airport. Gets a wonderful rush of crystal pure Himalayan air. Wow. Oh, wow. he hasn't had any freshened, crisp air for months. I like back in uh, that humid pre-monsoon, sweat dripping off your classical Greek nose, yeah, onto whatever. Yeah, he's up in the mountains now. He's walking straight out of town. He doesn't know where, why, or but you know he's like a migratory bird seeking to get back where he spawned. Salmon, too many metaphors crashing into each other. Thank God there's that Tyric Mer Mountain to end this former description. Um, Tyric Mer, 7,000 meter permanently snow covered Himalayan peak. Oh, it's the glory of Chitral. Over 20,000 feet of, it's just one of those mountains that is so gorgeous and so singular. It's not like a range of mountains. It's like Mount Shasta in Northern California, just lords over with grace and grandeur, the whole terrain. So yeah, wow, Turek Mur, huh? Spoom of snow. Blowing off its summit like a colossal Tibetan flag against pristine blue sky. He's just walking. He's free. He's walking north. Mm -hmm. Spawning north. Stop it. Um, yeah, crude motor track. I mean, even even smaller than the, the track from... Deer to uh, Chitral Town. Yeah. Uh, a hawk resting in a splintered oak tree. Mm -hmm. It's dead. Got struck by lightning. He, he, he wonders, what is this human doing? Uh, the silence uncanny. You got to be up in these Himalayas, remote Himalayas, to, to appreciate the profound silence of the atmosphere. Well, that dirt road uh, north from Chitral yeah, follows the course of the river to Mastush. And uh, Frequent cargo jeeps. Oh, yeah, they're loaded. The airplane came in. Mostly cargo. They threw a few tourists in there just for to make it a little fun. Um, dozen passengers. I mean, it's full of sacks of wheat, flour, mail, paraffin, stick matches. 
Essentials for mountain people. No room for Kipling. Why? There's, there's about a dozen people inside the Jeep and another six hanging off the back. Well, he doesn't take it personally. Uh, he just keeps walking. <sighs> Some hours, so. Dry rain shadow of uh, Tyrick Murr. Feels slightly sunburned. So he rewinds his turban. Lower over his forehead. He dusts off his uh, pantalons. Uh, nothing is happening. Uh, he sits beside the road and he smokes a clay conical chillin' pipe of pure hashish. He lazily gazes around. Mm -hmm. Kipling from London, he's never seen anything like this before. Well, uh, he notices, being a writer, he carefully observes that the landscape, predominantly dry in this microclimate, few dwarf pine trees, uh, lower ridges frame the river valley and reflect pastel colors. Ooh, it changed with the shadows of passing clouds and jagged snow-covered peaks looming more than 20,000 feet between these dry lower ridges. And, uh, oh, the villages along the river, they're lush, uh, irrigated fields uh, from river water. And so he makes a metaphor. It's entertaining, metaphors. So he describes this scene as a patchwork quilt. <laughs> and where the Villagers are irrigated their orchards. It's like a bright primary colors on a faded old quilt. Brilliant primary colors surrounded by faded colors. Uh, well, you also notice is almost uh, all the homes, they got fruit orchards. Uh, the seam vibrates like a forgotten Shangri-La. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, plum trees, uh, loquats, cherries, peaches, uh, apricots. I mean, uh, well, unexpectedly, <laughs> Kipling scores a ride from a native school teacher in a four-wheel drive Jeep going to Mastuj. He's never heard of it. A village at the confluence of two rivers. It's about 70 miles north of here from Chitral Town, 112 Ks, kilometers, 70 miles. And this becomes the lift of his lifetime. <sighs> yeah. Which sets up chapter two. <laughs> Rebirth in a Victorian time warp. <laughs> How mysterious can you get?